It's Pete Cohen here and welcome to episode 146 of the My365 podcast series. Now, every month we have one of our members of the month, which is an amazing opportunity to learn from someone who has really applied themselves to the art of being a better version of who they are. This month is something really different because for the first time it is a joint member of the month. And when I say joint, yes, they are married. It is Kath and Brian Harold. And it's amazing to see people become successful and achieve their goals and their dreams and their ambitions. But when you see two people working together and doing that, it's really, really incredible. So I'm inspired to be able to share this podcast with you. I'm sure you will learn something from their success. So get ready for episode 146 of the My365 podcast series. So this is episode 146 of the My365 podcast series and this is a first for us because we obviously have a member of the month and this month we have a joint member of the month as in Brian and Kath Harold. <laughs> Congratulations. How are you both? Amazing, thanks. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Excellent, amazing. <laughs> Smashing, as we say. Brilliant. Well, you know, it's, so this is the first podcast we've done like this, but it's also the first podcast I've ever done in uh, Bonnie, Scotland. Tell us uh, a little bit about yourselves and what you've got out of My365. Who, who wants to go first? Ladies first. Ladies first. first. Uh, bit about myself. I'm Kath. Yes. <laughs> I'm a mum. Mum of three plus two. Um, grown up in Scotland. Travelled a bit. Um, yeah, just quiet little me. Um, joined My365 looking to uh, looking for help to weight, uh, with weight loss, basically. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, it was yeah July 2015. I came across you. Um, How did you come across it? It just popped up on Facebook. Really? Yeah. Well, did someone so, else share it? No, do you think? no. It was just like a suggested thing to look at. Yeah, yeah. And then when you looked at it, do you remember what what were your first kind of initial? Oh, I was just drawn in initially, yeah, and started watching. And at, at first. With Brian, I was like, oh, this is a bit of a guilty secret here. I can't, can't yeah. share it, but I, so, I quickly did, yeah. And then when you saw what was going on, what were your initial reactions of seeing your wife kind of working on herself with, with the kind of principles around coaching? Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, basically I'd seen Kath over a number of years trying to find the right path for her, the right thing for her to do. And I'd seen her struggle with it as well. And I got a kind of vibe that she was doing something this time that, that was helping her. She was comfortable with it, she was comfortable with the approach, and I didn't see Cass stressing herself with it. So, I mean, our relationship's a very supportive relationship, always has been, always will be for that matter. Uh, so, basically, that trigger point, I was just like, this is a good thing, you know. And, and my mindset has always been, is basically, I've always been a supporting person. Uh, it's part of my, I feel it's one of my, my top values basically is to support first and then help if things don't work out basically. So the cat it was very much about this seems to be working so I'm not going to be you know judging whether it's the right thing for it to do as well. Yeah. She's on the right path so I'll be there to help her. Yeah. yeah it's always great when you see someone getting support yep. because support makes a huge difference right mm -hmm. yep. in, uh, in changing and often in relationships someone can often like not like the fact yep. that someone is choosing to get help. So. I, I really commend you for that. I really do. Good. So t tell us a little bit about uh, what you've achieved in in, okay. in, in, in yeah. a couple of years of kind of going to work on yourself. Okay. What are some of the things that you've got, gotten out of that? Well, I, I joined mainly for the weight loss, but that was that's still ongoing. Um, but I'm building the foundations, basically confidence. Yes. A lot of confidence. Um, I don't realise myself, basically, how much I've, I have gained in that way, and self-respect, um, yeah. more awareness, yeah. Because um, you're the mother of how many? Birth mother of three and uh, stepmom to two. And one of your daughters is here, right? Obviously she's yes, not on camera, but yeah. she's just kind of watching in the wings. Here, yeah. <laughs> how important is it? How important is it for you to be an example? Oh, huge, yes. Uh -huh. I just want to set the 
the wheels in motion that they follow the right, the right yeah. way. And Do you think they've been inspired by what you've achieved? Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Brian, what, what have you achieved since you? Because it, when, at what point did you decide, right? Okay, I'm going to engage in this process as well. Because first off, to to acknowledge, okay, this is great. Yep. My wife's getting something out of it. At what point did you think, oh, okay, all right, I'm going to do this? Yeah, I guess uh, I kind of dipped my toe in now and again. I've seen a couple of your morning broadcasts, and I, I just I had there was a lot of synergy going on. There's a lot of things that you were saying that I kind of recognised uh, that I'd probably have within some of my own principles and some of the rules that I live by, but then there's other things, you know, that I thought, God, there's something I didn't grasp onto, maybe that can help me to pull, because I, you know, I'd call it putting, you're in a trench for an extent, you know, with some of the things that you carry about with you in life. I thought, well, let me try some of this guys that, you know, toolkit out and, and see how it works. And through time, I mean, Kath and I were actually starting to have conversations that evolved around this, the My 365 sort yeah. of approach and you know what I could do for it. So it was pretty much probably the lead up to the, the first summit, I'd say probably from that summer, wasn't it? 2007, Onwards. 2006, two, 2016, Six, wasn't it? Yes. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah it was. Two years ago. Yeah, uh, and then three, actually going to the summit. I think this will be the third one. 2018, yeah. 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 So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah 16, 17, yeah. yeah. So, so the lead up to that, uh, I got a wee bit more engrossed in it, basically, and got really interested, and then went to the first summit. And that really was a bit of an epiphany for me. I just thought, listen to all these people. And I've seen like Susie's transformation Susie as Bowman. well. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought, I really hooked on to that. I thought, no, this is incredible. This is just people using what they've already got, you know, but using it in a different way, basically, to, to be a better version of herself. So I immediately start, I started my own master plan. If you like, just yeah. about how do I do this? But I got myself into a real muddle for a while. Uh, and it was only once I really joined Elite in 2017 that I started to tap in more yeah. to, you know, doing it formally, doing it properly, you know, doing myself justice and not just kind of playing at it. I like that, that concept of doing yourself justice. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, for me, it's about basically, you know, you know what you want to do. It's almost like you're given right to be the best version of yourself. Yeah. So if that's the case, you know, you shouldn't have to justify to yourself why you have to have A, B and C in place, basically. You should just put them in place. Do you think that's the same as well? It's just like that a lot of people have this thing of justifying your own investment in yourself. Yes. Like Some people seem to think it's almost like self-indulgent. Absolutely, or, yeah. yeah. Why, yeah. why is that, do you Guilty think? Guilty feeling about it. And I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's almost like saying to a children, you know, who are playing, you know, stop being so self-indulgent. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, do something a bit more responsible <laughs> mm -hmm. rather than... You know, it's, it's crazy that we, we kind of learn that. Yeah. I really admire people that want to be their best yeah. and are prepared to go through that kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, mental, to, you know, words in your head of, no, no, don't do that. Mm -hmm. But what, what's happened for you since you have been uh, paying justice to your own personal development? What, what changes have happened for you in your life? So the main changes for me are really about structure and getting some consistency in, in what I'm doing, basically. And I'd say in terms of my, my behaviours, uh, I mean, I always use, use, use this, it's not even an analogy, it's true life <laughs> scenes, basically. Like one, of the, one of the biggest things that Kath would dread was us going on holiday and us going to the airport. <laughs> yes. She, she professed to this. <laughs> I just used to go ballistic at security and everything, and everything was just a faff. And, you know, I just used to get myself really in a bit of a rage about the whole thing, and it was just... And, what I've learned to do basically is to adapt this toolkit now. Yeah. You know, just just with the, the key things about, you know, oh, that's interesting, let's see where this is going, stuff like that. Not getting stressed, and, and I think I've just brought that whole area, I've moved that whole area away from the forefront of what I do to very much at the back. So that's one thing. The other thing is uh, kind of strength of mind. So last year when I sat down and I wrote down, this is the plan, this is what I want to achieve for myself. And I, mean, I work as a kind of an architect in technology, so I spend my whole life advising people how to, you know, approach things and lay down foundations, and then move to the next layer of quality, and then finish it off type thing. Yes. And I give them milestones and plans, and I sat and thought, why am I not doing that for me? <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. crazy. So what I've done uh, through my three six five basically was literally just adopted a similar approach, and I've laid down like my building blocks. So I've got like four key building blocks that are my foundations for 
been able to move into that next stage. And one of them was definitely about strength of mind. So one of the things that I noticed there was alcohol, for instance, was, was a big player in my life. It had been since I'd been young. And that was an area that I realised, you know, that, that's a weakness. That's a weakness I'm not going to be able to take forward with me. So cut it off, leave it behind. So it gave me the strength of mind to sit yes. and do that properly. So, and that's something I'm really proud of, actually. You know. How many days now have you gone? Well, I'm over six months now, so yeah. I don't know what that is in days, probably 190 days or something. So. And what, what changes have you noticed in him? He's less reactive um, in situations. Um, yeah, thinks before he speaks yeah. <laughs> and reacts. And what changes have you seen in Kath? Uh, definitely, I mean, confidence in Kath and opening up as well. I mean, we've always had a you know, a close relationship where we could engage and discuss mm. things. Kath used to find it real difficult to find the words and express what she was meaning. Yeah. And that sometimes ended in frustration and, you know, not yeah. so much now. Uh, yeah. I, you're, you're it's a lot, easier. Yeah. Well, it's, it's always, it's isn't it? It's always yeah. work in progress, yeah, isn't it? It's yeah. never uh, kind of you've arrived. Yeah. No. And uh, we so always... Sitting here, I'd say, is, is a testament is, to that. Yeah. Huge, yeah. <laughs> let, 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 let's talk about... Um, so yesterday we had an event mm. in, uh, in Glasgow. It was one of the My365 meetups. And uh, I asked you before we came on the camera, what was your biggest takeaway from yesterday? Yeah. Let's just talk about that a little bit because I thought that was quite profound. Yeah, you, you covered um, asking two questions when you meet people. Um, so you, you think, what am I going to learn from this person when you're, you're listening to them and how can I help them? And, yeah. and they're great questions to, to keep. What is it about that do you think that resonated with you so much? Yeah, just more so the how can I help, the second question. Yeah. Um, I think I need to do that more than what I have been doing. Well, do you think that, obviously, because obviously one of the main parts of what we're doing is looking to help people find out what really makes them come alive, what mm -hmm. did they feel they were really put on this earth to do? Yeah. Do you think that might have something to do with the fact that you want to genuinely help people? Do more, yes, uh -huh. definitely. Mm. It's, it's quite ironic, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. often the way to help people is just shut up and listen, <laughs> yeah. you know? Because often just by listening, mm -hmm. people feel that they're being heard and that often helps. Yes, I see. Um, so what about what you've observed in terms of this community and seeing other people evolve and what's that been like? It's, I've never come across it before. It's really quite something amazing. Um, friends for life, everybody in the, in the, in the group. Um, Last night, just, how many, was about 20 of you all went yeah, out? Yeah, we all went out for a meal afterwards and yeah, it was just great chatting around the table and hearing everybody's stories. And, yeah. How important do you think it is to be around other people that are looking to improve themselves? Oh, it's, it's huge, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's vital, yeah. isn't it? It's Why? What, what is it about it, do you think? That it's it encouraging. Makes... And, yeah, it's quite hard to put it into words, isn't it? Yeah. So it how is. do you articulate that? Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I think I, I said something at the session yesterday about, you know, that, that affirmation that you get by sharing something with another person. Yeah. Uh, and if that other person, you know, they don't necessarily need to be supportive of it, but you've almost set the contract. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do, you know, and that, you, you've told somebody so you have to go and do it. I mean, what tends to happen, I think, is if you don't have people who are like-minded, who are very negative in their approach, they would give you instant feedback as yeah. in, are you wasting your time doing that for, or oh, that's a bloody waste, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I think that's the difference. The community we've got people is people that are listening yeah. and that can actually share the experience and learn from your experience to help them develop yeah. as well. I, I was, uh, obviously the football is, is still on. In fact, when this goes out, England will have won the World Cup because <laughs> course, we all, yeah. we all know right, it's yeah. coming home. <laughs> uh, but what, I don't know how you feel about, about all of that, but watching it for me is that tribalism mm. around people putting so much into a game, basically. Mm. And there always seems to be a big depression actually after World Cups, even mm. for the team who wins, because after a couple of weeks, it's like people just go back. They haven't got that. They haven't got something to put into something external. Do you think that we can do that ourselves? Do you think you are kind of doing that yourself? Are you excited about developing yourself and taking yourself so, forwards? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because obviously you, you made a video, which I, again, I spoke about this yesterday in the group about the identifying with the person that you want to become. Yep. Whereas another lady was talking about something similar, but was struggling because she clearly doesn't have an idea of where she's going. 
Do you think that's important to have some form of identity, identifying with the person that you're looking to work towards becoming? I think it is vitally important. I mean, if, it's back to this visualization again. So you're back to, you know, if you, if you can't see it and you can't see yourself in the picture, then you're not prepared to get to that, to that goal. Yeah. So you need to wind back from that and think, well, where can I see myself in those steps? And that's what I'm, what I'm kind of doing. So what where can I see myself, you know, basically clearly on, on my journey? And, and that's what's taken me to just do maybe the first two foundation steps. Yeah. Because the end game is still a bit bloody. And I yeah. might yet change direction. Yeah. But what I'm doing is building up strength. But unless you can visualize that and actually see yourself doing it, I think it's really difficult. So, so is that something that you do through your day-to-day -day life? Do you think about how you're acting and thinking how is that acting yep. in accordance to the person that I'm working towards? Yeah, I'm doing that. Uh, I'm also, uh, I'm now, I mean, I've been, my, my recent contract I've been working on, I've been on there a couple of years now helping this particular organisation. So they call, they call me Mr. Motivator because what I'm doing <laughs> yeah. is, is I'm kind of, I'm now adapting, adopting those principles, if you like, uh, in the, the area that I'm working. I've got a lot of people that I work with that have been under a lot of stress and duress for years and getting little value, good pay, little value out of what they do, basically. Uh, and I'm helping them to kind of recognise, basically, just by making small changes in how they approach things, that they can make a bigger difference to them. Yes. You know? And, as a result, obviously, where, where, where they work, but this is primarily about them not breaking themselves. Yes. Uh, so I've genuinely been kind of recognised over the last few six months to a year potentially is like Mr. Motivator or they're actually putting me in charge of people which should never happen with, with external agencies type thing but I said no that's, that's a great that's you know brilliant I mean? isn't it yeah that's a great often a sign that something yeah. is uh, is happening through yeah. you, you you being the change that's it and I enjoy that because it's not just that I also share my knowledge freely I've always been known for that uh, so basically I like I just generally get a lot of enjoyment I've seen somebody taking the package and doing yeah. something with it. So. Yes. But their way, you know, I'm not telling them, I'm not managing them. I'm just saying. Like, so, so, so when you decided to stop drinking, uh, how was that received by uh, the people around you? Yeah, it was interesting. So uh, they, they still think I'm a lunatic, basically. Because, because you don't drink. Well, well, I'm Scottish. I don't yeah, drink. Yeah, of course. I mean, you're exactly. not Scottish. Hang on. Exactly. Hang on. You call yourself a Scot and... <laughs> What's going to happen? What? Yeah. Surely my life's ended. You know, I can't have a social life. I can't. And I'm like, oh, I can. Yeah. You know, I don't care. I'll go along to the bar and drink a pint of milk. I've done it. Yeah. Went to my brother-in-law's fiftieth. Everybody was, you know, drowning in alcohol. I went up and had a pint of iced water. Yeah. You know, for me that that so, was so, a. So um, let's talk about that because that that is also really interesting in terms of your your family in yep. terms of this is something you spoke freely about yesterday. Yep. T tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, so. My, my mum's side of the family says in particular, so they're very much uh, kind of Irish Catholic bloodline, which is, you know, you know which, which revolves back around to probably Vikings and goodness knows what else. But, but basically the whole family was just obs obsessed with getting together, drinking lots of alcohol and, you know, as, as much as possible in a shorter period of time. So basically weddings, funerals, christenings, communions. And when that wasn't on, it was football, or it was boxing, or it was just Friday, yes, <laughs> or it was just yes. Saturday. So from a very early age, probably from the age of 13, uh, actually, there was one, one year, I can't remember when it was, I took four weeks off, wasn't it? I decided I'm mm -hmm. going to stop drinking for four weeks. And I had an epiphany about two weeks into that. That was in my late 40s at the time. I hadn't had a weekend without alcohol since I was 13 years old. Genuinely not one weekend when I hadn't, you know, been out and drinking, you know, what had become probably far too much alcohol for anybody to be, be thinking about doing and staying healthy. Uh, so that, that's a really turning point, you know, and I struggled well, with what that. What different? Sorry, go on, you struggled? So I struggled with that for that year. This was like the year before I just gave up. Yeah. Basically, because I thought, this is ridiculous, you know, and I was caught in a cycle again and I couldn't get myself back out of it. And that's, yeah, I just feel now that I have. But in terms of the, the impact on the family in general, I mean, every single, well, my mum had uh, two sisters and three brothers. They all died from alcohol-related diseases. My mum almost did. She managed to, to kind of avoid it, but still died prematurely from some of the damage that it had done to her. So, you know, there's just that awakening about, I mean, I've got, I mean, five kids to look after here. This is ridiculous. You know, really That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. There's something, I don't know what it is, but for me as a coach, yeah. there's something so uh, profound about 
choosing to follow a different path. Yep. Mm -hmm. That the easy path would be to take the path that everyone else takes, yep. but to step off and go, nah, that's not for me. Yep. And w what have you noticed in him in, in, through not drinking alcohol? Not that he was an alcoholic before <laughs> or anything like that, but what changes have you noticed? Yeah, decisions are made easier. And, yeah. Um, yeah, just... Still snoring. Still, well, a wee bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> snoring's a bit better. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a big... You must be very proud of him as well. Definitely, yeah, huge, hugely proud, yeah. So, so, so what about you? So describe to me, mm. um, Kath, before My365, how did you kind of feel about yourself? Oh, very low self-esteem. Um, went through bouts of depression. Um, yeah, just muddling along. Just felt there wasn't much, much to aim for. Or... And what about now? Yeah, what are you aiming for now? I mean, well, to be... Healthy, fit, active. Healthier. Yeah, healthier. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, before my 365, I did manage to shed a good chunk of weight, um, 75 pounds I lost. Um, and then it crept up a couple of stone, went on, and that's when I joined my 365. Yeah. So you're fitter, um, you're I'm healthier, fitter, yeah. you're happier, yeah. you're more confident. Definitely. How do you know that you're more confident? I was thinking about that question. Um, I've put myself out to travel, like I went up to Inverness myself for a couple of nights to Susie Beaumont's um, events, events yeah. yeah, and down to London for the meetup as well. I took myself down there, and that's that's huge confidence. Mm -hmm. it took a lot for me. Um, driving's another uh, thing I'm, I lack confidence in, so yeah. But Again. you've been doing that, yeah. So yeah. how important is it, do you think, to push yourself a little bit in order oh, to? Yeah, it, it gives you more confidence when you do it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely... So with Brian saying, I can, you know, he's describing it and he's like using mm. his hands and he's like, okay, what, what are you actually... He's obviously looking at something yeah, himself, yeah. being the way he wants to be. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're doing? I'm still trying to see that vision, I must admit. Yeah. 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 So it's always work in progress, mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, not that this is a coaching session. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, an interview, but... Yeah. Uh, maybe offering you a little, maybe one mm -hmm. of the things which might come out of this is that people that watch it might also realize the importance of being able to see where you're going. Yes. Otherwise, you know what, you just end up someplace else. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, so what's next in terms of what's on the horizon? So I know something big is on the horizon uh, mm -hmm. next weekend, actually, again, by the time this goes out, yeah. uh, <laughs> you would have done that yep. already. Tell us, tell us what's happening and how did it happen? How did this thing come about? Right, so the, the, trail, the trail Walker Challenge, uh, which is so, we get Glenn, Sophia, uh, Nicola, myself. So all other My365, my uh, I think how many of them are previous members of the month? Uh, so we get Sophia, Glenn. Sophia and yeah. Glenn. Yeah. And now obviously yourself. My good self, that's it. So, so Glenn actually posted something way, way back at the start of the year about this is something he fancied. This thing had come up, does anybody fancy joining him to do it? And we actually had a call the other day all of us and he actually said then he wasn't expecting anybody to come back so we ended up with Sophia and I were straight off the bat yeah we'll do it that's exactly what I've been looking for this is a year when I want to challenge myself and actually come out the year and say I've achieved stuff so we've done that uh, we've got together so that's this hundred kilometer trek across the South Downs we've got 30 hours and the power of this to me and we were, we were talking about this to some of the other members yesterday at, at the meetup was and nobody realized that None of it, neither of us have actually met up before. Yeah, so it's, yesterday was the first time I've met Sophia, it's the first time I've met Nicola. I've shook hands with Glenn at, at the London Summit last I've year. I've never spoken to him. I've had no conversations with him out with that, and we've had about three phone calls, just making sure that we're still all kind of, it was more about logistics than about people. The calls, you know, we're not saying, oh my God, how are we gonna do this? It's like, we're just saying, we're doing this. You know, we do not care what happens, Four of us are crossing that line, basically, and we're, you know we're going to cross that line, heads held tight, and we're just we just can we can all feel what we're going to feel at the end of that, yeah. And it's probably something that we're just we all want to feel. It's like fit to burst type thing. So you feel like you're already friends, right? With these Absolutely, people. yeah. You, you, it, it, it's, why, how does that happen? I suppose it's just what is it like some sort of synergy, some kindred spirits. I think it is down to that kind of spirit. So the four of us clearly have this passion to to 
get through a challenge, yeah. And you know, there's nothing there. We didn't know anything about each other's makeup or capability or anything else, basically. Uh, and we've just decided sign up to it. We're doing it. Don't care what happens. We're getting through it. And I think it is genuinely that. There's the power of the the kind of the common spirit between the four of us. Yeah. Because we all have a desire to achieve something, and prove to ourselves that we can. Yeah. You know, do something that you never planned. Uh, you're going to deal with it, cope with it, get through it, and actually discover that it's, you know... That, that do you think that's part experience. of being what a human being really is all about? I, th I think it is, yeah. Working towards something, achieving something. Yep. You know, and I suppose that's, again, why the football is so popular, because it, it's something is working towards something, but we don't ultimately yep. have the, the, the control. We can't control what those 22 players on a pitch are doing but we can control what we're doing. Yeah, but you can feel, feel part of it. I think this is, so the, the difference being in football, you're almost sponsoring, you know, you are sponsoring your team to do the best yeah, you they are. can do. We're all paying for it. Yeah, so that's why people, you know, people feel the right that they should be the manager because they can comment on who the best player should have been for that position and, and why you didn't play well that day, all that kind of stuff. So that's all that human interaction and social commentary. That's what yeah. people need. They need to feel part, part of that. It's a tribal thing, as you say. And then you look at Trailwalker, basically, although it's uh, separate teams, there's like, I think there's 400 teams or something doing it or something like that, so it's nearly 2,000 people, if you include the sport people. We're not racing each other. You know, some teams might be, some teams might not be, but what we are doing is very much for ourselves, but also to promote the kind of the My365 approach of, you guys have been training for a year, doing this every weekend, we just met up, and here we go, we're going to go off and do this, and do it well. You know, and to me that's going to be a testament basically to how this whole community works. Yeah. That's amazing. And your goal is obviously, you said, to be on Brighton Beach watching England versus Belgium. That's it, yeah, on, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Be, yeah. So um, what would you say to anyone that's watching this about personal development and why you think it's worth working on yourself? Or is it just worth just carrying on people just drifting through life? What do you think, Kat? Uh, I think it is very important to, to look into yourself and for me um, forgiveness was a big thing and letting go, um, what else? Do you think, why do you think people find that hard to do? Because yeah. obviously it's quite emotional yeah. to, to even, I can see, right? Um, and I think um, it's a big thing to let go. Why do you think people find that so hard to let go, to forgive? Is it just it's, part of... It's just a leap. You've got to take that leap, haven't you? And yeah. Yeah. And set yourself forward and set your goals. Is that something that yeah. you want to do, inspire other people yeah, who maybe you... hold on to things that uh -huh. have happened to them and the experience in their life? And... Yeah, possibly, yeah. Just, it's, you don't need to, it's in the past, although, yeah, you can, you can move on. And, and that's what you're doing, you've mm -hmm. clearly, yeah. but it is a, it, it's not like an epiphany, isn't it? it it's more mm -hmm. like it's something you've got to chip away at. Yeah, exactly. And I obviously saw you massively show up and show up and show up and mm. show up, and then you had an issue with, was it with your knee? Your knee, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and th you almost kind of gave up, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right, I kind of faded, faded a wee bit, but no, I was still saw the importance of keeping, keeping going. Um, yeah, always. So you'd say to people that it's worth investing in yourself because life can be better. You mm -hmm. can have what more, what more fun, more enjoyment, more. Yeah. Um, be happier. I don't know how to put it into words. Yeah. Um, yeah, just more meaning to to life. Um, There's a completeness got, in it, isn't it? You can. It? Yeah. You can do whatever you want. You can choose and take the path you want. You don't have to conform to what everyone else tells you to do. Yeah. Um, what about what about yeah. yourself? What would you say to people about why it's important, or why they should consider investing in themselves and getting better and achieving? And so I think I mean basically. So back to the the whole uh, the thoughts around like syntropy and all that kind of stuff. I'm not, I just I just love that, that that whole area. Basically. So explain what the syntropy means to you, because not everyone. Yeah. So to me, it is basically you know you you you're made up. You're made up chemically, uh, you know, there's a, there's a balance within your, your, whole, your whole being, whether it be health, uh, mentality, or anything else, but you've got your cells desire development and, and they want to live. And the only thing that stops them living and, and generating 
good cells is like is you fighting that process, which is the dystropic side of stuff, basically, where you're introducing negativity through whatever means, whether it be through what you consume, mm. mentally, you know, uh, what you hear or, or what you eat. Uh, so you're suppressing yourself from self-development. So you're almost basically, it's, again, it's like you should really be justifying why you feel the need to do that rather than just letting yourselves develop. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't have to justify why I'm going to invest in myself to help that syntropy uh, happen, basically. So to me, it's just a natural thing to do. But you need to need to sit back or step back from it a bit and, again, kind of visualise what that means to you as a person. What is it you're developing? What is it you're using, basically, to, to become that kind of, as I call myself, a centropic warrior, if you like, basically. So I've never... It's really great to hear you explain that because you've definitely given me a different perspective of it. So syntropy is something, I don't know how I came across it, yep. but the guy who won a Nobel Prize in 1937 basically was saying that every living cell lives yep. because it has an innate desire to express itself yep. fully. Uh, and it's like we all have that. But it's when you were saying that, I was just thinking how society kind of gives us very clear messages that maybe we shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, we society should conform like to into a way that we're basically killing ourselves yep. by yep. the way that we think, the way that we live, the yep. way that we eat. And what you've seems like you've discovered is the greatness in evolving in a way where you're allowing yourselves to express themselves in a way where they might continue to express themselves as yep. opposed to what some of your family members might have done, yep. which was the complete opposite of that. Yep. That's really quite, uh, really quite powerful. Yeah, and to me, the key thing there is about you have to justify why you're not letting that development take place. Yeah. You should never have to justify why you should need to let it. You don't need to let a development take place. Yeah. It'll take place naturally. Yeah. Some real food for thought there, right? Almost Pete Cohen is almost lost for words. <laughs> so what's next? What's next for you, Kath? In the next few months, where do you want to be? Yeah. What are you working on? Um, no, good health and fitness. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of took a took a sideline for a while, so I'm getting back into that. Um, Let's help you develop an yeah. image of where you're going, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I where I'm lacking. Yeah, I need to get that sorted. And, and I think as we as we finish this podcast, I really mm -hmm. genuinely want to thank you for showing up and putting yourself out there mm -hmm. to people who don't know you and you don't, you don't know them, they don't know you. Yeah. But I'm, I know that there'll be at least one person, probably a lot more, yeah. who will be inspired by, by, by your story. And the story is evolving. Mm -hmm. So uh, for anyone that you know, watches this, uh, feel free to leave your comments, uh, your, what, you've, what you're taking away from, from, from this. So congratulations for being the My365 members for the month of August. Uh, the, the month where England win the World Cup. <laughs> My <laughs> birthday as well. So really? Good. When's your birthday? <laughs> 23rd of August. 23rd. Well, that's the week that this podcast comes out. So there you go. Maybe there's cool. some synergy <laughs> there and <is>. synergy <laughs> all yeah. at the same time. And uh, I'm excited to continue to work with you and yes, take this yeah. to a, a whole new level. Thank so. you. I mean, it's, you. It's, it's, it genuinely, it's, it's just immense for me. It's been immense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, you actually, amazing. you mentioned something about uh, courage, which I thought was really yep. interesting. and how developing courage in yourself to help others have courage yep. in, in what, them, what they're doing. And I just think that that's so... Well, my three values were basically resilience, creativity, and bravery, so... Bravery? Will... You mean like uh, William Wallace? Yeah. So, well, <laughs> interestingly, so it's a fact to, to close on, if you like. So my first name, Brian with the Y, is an old Irish name. It means strength. And my surname, Harold, means uh, leader of warriors, basically. Really? So, yeah. So technically, I'm a strong leader of warriors. Yes, so, yeah. definitely. That's why yeah. you were given the name. Exactly. So you might as well yeah. live that out. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Take care. We'll <laughs> see you soon. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.